All right, people, this next hand, up against the high-stakes poker legend, the phenom, the young online pro who took the poker world by storm and frickin' won every pot on high-stakes poker, Mr. Tom Dwan, um, on high-stakes poker, as I said, which you can watch. It's back. Gabe Kaplan, AJ Benza, the show you all wanted back. It's back, but you gotta watch it on Poker Go. Poker Go is a great app opportunity for you to learn how to play. If you want to take poker seriously, it's well worth the freaking, what is it, seitan sandwich or, you know, tofu scramble sandwich. So I don't know why I'm doing this vegan reference thing. Probably because I'm vegan. Makes sense. But yeah, get yourself a subscription to Poker Go. I want to thank them again for allowing us to use this, fo- this, this footage to sort of help promote the show, you know, and talk about some of the interesting hands. And this one, this one was controversial. We got a lot of talk on Twitter, so I thought we would talk about yeah. it. Yeah, yeah going, in, going into that river here, probably. Yeah, like, you're like a two, two to three. Aldemir is in the game with a pair of sevens, raises the 2100, straddles on. The next one is 50 50. I thought I'd like to open two more. But now. And here's another ace king. Dwan calls the 2100. We've been too many, but. Don't play his ace king slow. Not Charleston? Yeah. Daniel with eights. Oh, right here. Mm. Okay. Let's go down. Yeah. And he three bets to 12,700. A substantial well, raise. Yeah, can't help it. Something. He would have called you. Yeah, but he, he, with those two boards, it looks like you'd have done all right. No. Once again, you know, the blinds are 2 and 400 with a $400 big blind ante. But, but, JRB, JRB showed up. So that means straddles are abound. Straddles abound. And this straddle was 800. Okay. So in this spot, Corey Aldemir raises to 2100. Right? 2100 off of an 800 straddle. Seems reasonable. Tom Dwan, he calls on the button. And yours truly, from the blind, with two eights. This is a spot where you're almost always just going to call, okay? Sometimes you're going to throw some three bets in there, right? Considering how loosely Tom Dwan will play in late position, calling raises with Jack Deuce suited and all this kinds of trash, there's a decent amount of money out there to just take it with the eights, right? You got the 2,100 from the two players. You got, that's 42. You got the 800, that's 5,000, right? 5,000 plus another, you know, eight, 6,000 out there, okay? There's already 6,000 dead, okay? It's what we call a squeeze play. So if Corey doesn't have, you know, a very strong hand, you know, it's very likely that, you know, Tom folds or he tries to play a pot in position with us and, um, you know, we, we have a decent spot with eights. Obviously, it's not great to play the hand out of position, which is why we size up pretty good. We kick that raise up to 12,700. So we're bet we're we're forcing them to put in at least another 10,000. Okay? I would have lost. Second one I think I won. Karai is thinking about calling. We haven't seen much action from him so far this season. Yeah. Wrong time <laughs> to get involved. How much is it? 12,7 total. Well, I'll run it twice. I'll run it once or twice. I don't care what anybody wants to do. And he senses that. Goes out. Hey, congratulations on that. You play, oh. you, it was fun to watch you play. It. You're like, yeah, and, and not yeah. sure you played You played very well, but you're you're, you're fun to watch, too. Like, you, you have a good energy about you. Yeah. Thanks. I appreciate it. You got a nice energy, watching. nice sparkle, <laughs> nice presence. And how much you got in I front of you? <laughs> yeah. The whole the whole show. The final table was actually the most boring of the of the entire thing. Come on. Uh, Raise all in. in my wow. Opinion, Juan's but, all uh, in. It was nice to see him win. All right. So it you know Corey folds. He's got pocket sevens. He's like I don't want to mess with it. So that that should tell you right there that this is like worthwhile, right? He was giving me a ton of credit to just fold sevens. He didn't want to take a flop, and we're playing pretty deep stacked here. Yeah, everybody's sitting with over 100,000 at this point, because that's, you know, the buy-in. He folds, and now, here's where things get frisky. Tom Dwan moves all in, okay? Well, we put in 12.7, which means I've got to call, I got 99,000 back, okay? So this is just math, right? This is math and a little bit of math based off of 
what Tom Dwan's perceived range is, okay? Now, what do you think his range was? This is, the, this is just the question that is going to tell you whether or not you think this is a plus EV call or a minus EV call. This isn't a tournament. I saw a lot of people argue, ah, you can wait for a better spot. And it's a cash game. In a cash game, anytime you think a situation is plus EV, you just take it. If you think it's minus EV, you don't. So now the question is, for 99000 what price am I being laid? That's important, right? There's already about 30000 in that pot. How do I get 30000 Well, I said there was about six already, right? Um, and then we, well, well, you, well there was my 12.7, his 12.7, plus about, you know, six or whatever. So it's about 30000 in the pot, and it's costing me 100 So it's 1.3 to 1, right? Now I have to decide whether or not two eights is plus EV at 1.3 to 1 against Tom Dwan's range, Okay. Scary, oh, eights, you know, you're going to get it in flips, you're going to get it in back. Yeah, I know, but I don't care about any of that. I'm looking at the entirety of his range and what he can have in this spot. Okay, so let's start with the top hand, pocket aces. Do, do you think he could have pocket aces? Certainly, it's always possible, but I don't think so for a couple reasons. I think aces, three bets a little more often from the button. He's obviously tricky, he will slow play hands, but I feel like aces... With the straddle, he may want to get it in against hands like kings and queens, if Corey has that. Also the jam, right? So if he does have aces, you would think he's way more likely to click it back to like 28,000, 20, you know, 9, 30,000, something like that. Now, again, we can't rule it out completely, but I discount aces heavily. Similarly, with a hand like kings, okay? Similar situation, I think, across the board. Now, I will give him a little more kings. I think kings makes a little more sense now to just, you know, jam pre than it does with the aces. The two hands I'm really concerned about that he absolutely can have are queens and jacks, okay? Queens and jacks. So that makes, how many combos of queens are there? Six. How many combos of jacks are there? Six. So we got 12 combos. <laughs> have us dead. Dead, right? And maybe there's a couple kings and aces, but again, we discount that for the most part. So not a lot of hands have us crushed. Oh, but wait, you didn't finish, Daniel. You got tens and nines. Okay, here was my thought process with tens and nines, based on how I felt, you know, Tom likes to play, especially in position, he's going to take a flop with those hands a lot, especially because my sizing was pretty big. I think a lot of times if he has nines or tens, he's not, I, I really don't think he's jamming with those hands. I think he's flatting because we're deep enough where he's going to play the hand in position. So I, for the most part, rule those out. Well, so what other hands can he have then that you're in good shape against, right? If queens and jacks are there and some kings and aces, well, how am I in good shape against that range? Well, that wouldn't be good, right? But he also has ace-king, which we know. I do think he might have some ace-queen, maybe the ace-queen suited, the ace-queens, whatever. And then, again, I'm not so sure about this one, but I know that against a lot of the more modern theory-type -like poker players, one of the hands they'll turn into a bluff there, one of the predominant category of hands that is used with solvers in terms of bluffs are ace-wheel card suited. What does that mean? Ace, deuce, ace, three, ace, four, ace, five, suited. Those are the bluff candidates that people choose to use in these spots, right? How's eights doing against that? Pretty, pretty, pretty good, right? So factor that in now again. We've got six combos, uh, 12 combos total that we feel like we're dead in, queens and jacks, right? There's 16 combos of ace-king. Well, we're doing great against ace-king. We're actually a, a favorite, and we're getting 1.3 to 1. Same thing with ace-queen. Now you factor in, say, some ace-four, ace-five, ace-three suiteds, and we're two to one favorites against those types of hands, right? So in the entirety of it all, and I did this calculation rather quickly, actually, because it was already in my head that I didn't think he would have aces, maybe kings, queens, jacks. Queens, jacks was my biggest fear. But I just shrugged and be like, all right, if he has queens and jacks, I'm just going to lose, you know, or whatever. I still am not dead. You know, you can still win. So in my worst case scenario, right, he has the queens or the jacks. I have 21%, which makes me like a five to one dog or four to one dog or whatever. That's not good you know, but that's my worst case scenario. Best case scenario, two to one favorite. Well, I'm looking at the overall case here and I'm pretty confident actually. And I, again, like I said, um, this is where, you know, you, you could be, you, I mean, you could be wrong because you're, you're trying to deviate from, you know, game theory, right? A little bit when you're um, factoring in one specific player's range based on his tendencies. So again, because it was Tom, I felt like nines or tens was very unlikely and aces was unlikely, which leaves just, you know, 12 combos, plus, let's say, give him half the kings, 
right? Maybe 15 combos. Well, there's 16 combos of ace-king, ace-queen, and the other stuff that I felt like um, it was worth the gamble at 1.3 to 1. Wow. Dwan is ignoring the ace-king curse of this season. Nice. And Daniel immediately calls. Poker, right. poker will just be off the hinges for a long time. There goes our time. It's way <laughs> Man, Daniel, you're stubborn. Is this well, the hand you know how hard it is that Ace King is going to hold up, or at least win one of the two hands? Best case scenario. I assume they're going twice. Pair is four and zero oh against overcards, and now I'm flipping, so it should be even. You liar, huh? <laughs> against this guy on high stakes poker. I mean, <laughs> when does he ever win flips? He's over two already. We have seen you run pretty well, but did flip did flip a little bit with the. The I missed it. Are they running it twice? One. I oh, believe crazy. so. Nine king three on the flop. Right. What is it? One hundred and five. <laughs> going twice, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, they are doing it twice. <laughs> ah, no. That's how you got to do it. And you there's the eight. In. Jeez. You got wow. It in. <laughs> <laughs> Brutal. Wow. It's, it's the only I've learned from the people. Moan. <laughs> Moan it in. Give him a king. Yeah. King on the river. He's 5-0, and oh, pair versus ace-king. Yeah. Ace-king ain't all it's cracked up to be. It's a drawing hand, as Doyle used to say. Really bad for Juan, loses out. two of his outs. 5-5-7. Okay. Five, five, Another 5 on the turn. Oh, and he, oh, he's got a 5 now. A 5 can win. Glad you told him that, Daniel, because I don't think Tom Drawn realized <laughs> that. Are we, are we doing the second one, too? <laughs> one king, three aces, and a 5. My problem. Five outs. <laughs> so good. Six Remember, on the river. Ace king never wins. Five, six, ace seven. king does not ever win. You don't nice. have that one. We just thought a lottery. Yeah. When will ace king <laughs> win? I mean, one of the two hands. It's got to happen. It has to. And somehow, Tom Dwan lost both. We ran it twice, and he lost both. I won both on high stakes poker. That was a shock to me because, you know, I hadn't done so well uh, <laughs> when it comes to luck in high stakes poker, but I was thankful to win that one. But yeah, this one was really just came down to, to simple math based on my opponent's rage. Now, if this was Alan Kessler, okay, you know, hey, Alan, what's up, Alan? What's, what's bothering you today, Alan? If this was Alan Kessler, I would fold those eights because Alan Kessler would have aces, kings, because he's scared. Probably not, though. He's even three better. But, like, the problem, he's never going to jam there without, like, a, he's never going to do that with ace-four suited. I promise you that. If, if Alan Kessler does that, his range is going to be way more condensed. So uh, it would be a fold. But Tom Dwan gave him credit for, uh, you know, sometimes bluffing. And uh, in this case, listen, I got it in good. Okay, 1.3 to 1, up against ace-king. Bing, bang, bomb. We win it. Check out next week's High Stakes Poker every, every Sunday. Every Sunday. Yeah, no, every Monday. Every Monday, a new episode of High Stakes Poker. Uh, some really big pots coming. The stakes get up there. Remember, you got to get yourself a subscription to Poker Go. Till next time. <laughs> <laughs>